So let me give you an overview of 2.30. And we're going to start off by going all the way back to what was EE223, like Sabine said, is it E223 on steroids? So in EE223, we finished up with sinusoids, which we said was steady state sinusoid. And we put it into a system. In our case, the system was a circuit. And what did we get out? What kind of what kind of shape did we get out, uh, Joe? What did we get out? Uh, usually, we got out an equation for the voltage or current. Uh, okay, so you're taking it from a theoretical standpoint. Let's say you're actually in a lab and you hook up your your frequency generator to a sinusoid, and it's got a particular frequency and amplitude and offset, um, and you put it into a system. What do you get out? What's the shape of what you measure on the oscilloscope? Isn't it a square wave? Or, you, no, sorry. I can't remember, sir. Okay, it's a sinusoid. If you put in a sinusoid, phaser analysis says you got to get out a sinusoid. And of that sinusoid, you can redeem yourself, Joe, what's similar and different. Sinusoids are completely characterized by frequency, amplitude, and phase. What is the same and what's different in the output sinusoid versus the input sinusoid? And you're on again, Joe. Um, <laughs> I'm lost. Frequency? I don't know. Frequency. Okay, phase. Ampl uh, frequency, amplitude, and phase. These are the three things. And frequency stays the same. You put in a two hertz uh, sine wave and you do phaser analysis on it. When you, you, you do the J omega analysis and you get out a sinusoid of that exact same frequency. The only thing that's different is the phase and the amplitude. Remember, you'd get back a, a phaser that it might look, you know, I'll, I'll erase this in a second, but you, if you have a six uh, cosine of 3T plus 45 degrees that goes into your circuit, you'd, re you'd replace that with a phaser. And then you do your phaser analysis and what you get out would be uh, maybe two at an angle of minus five degrees. And then that would map into a two cosine of 3t minus five degrees. So in other words, your amplitudes change, your phase offset changes, but your frequency stays the same. So that's, the, that's where we ended up in, in, in EE223. And that seemed probably a little bit like magic. We could have derived it from differential equations. Even if you do the derivation, it still seems like magic. And that's where we left it. So that's where we begin this class. And in this class, after you take uh, 230, you'll be able to handle single-sided functions. And by sing single-sided signals, I mean things that look like this. I'm gonna do these in a different color to make it clearer. So that's our input. Here are single sided signals, things like this. What is that called, uh, uh, Po Chen, Chow? What is that signal called? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, you guys are rusty. It's called a unit step or a U of T, either one. Or here's another one, all single-sided, and they're single-sided because to the left, they're all zero. And then at time equals zero, they're suddenly turned on. These kind of signals are really common in, uh, in controls. And we can take, whoops, and we can take any of these, uh, any of these signals, put them into a system, and once you get out, we're going to compute using Laplace transforms. We said phasers was the J omega domain. We're going to say Laplace transforms are the S 
domain. So instead of J omegas, we're going to see lots of S's. Um, that's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to have a test. So this is the first um, 10 weeks, first third of the class. Then we're going to talk about double-sided signals. So as an example of a double-sided signal, we might have um, the square wave that Joe talked about. Or something kind of crazy, like uh, you'll be studying this half-wave rectified signal in your electronics class. And so these are all signals that will go into our system. And give us some output. And for a double-sided system, we're going to compute it using a Fourier series. And what's it's called the AI and B sub I domain. Now, the one special thing about it is that they're not just double-sided signals, but they're double-sided periodic signals. And then we'll have a test. That's the next third of the class. So now you've got the last third of the class and there's really only other one other kind of signal that exists, and it's an A periodic signal. And as an example of an A periodic signal, we might have something that looks like um, just a lone, a lone pulse. You might have something that is speech. Kind of hard to kind of draw, but that might be what speech looks like. And that again goes into our, into our system. And we measure what's out and we can compute that using the 4AA transform, which is back in the J omega domain just like our phaser analysis was that we ended up with 223. And then at, that's, and that's the end of the course. Then we have a final exam and, uh, and you're done. So the course is very neatly divided into, into, these, into these three areas. And this is the first part of the course. This is the second part of the course. And this is the, the third part of the course. We're learning a new language in this. Um, Practicing engineers talk about signals in the time in the frequency domain, all these types of domains, the S domain, A, B domain, J omega domain. These are all examples of a frequency domain. Practicing engineers talk about these things in the frequency domain at least as often, if not more often, than they do in the time domain. So it's going to require a real change in thought. Big picture, that's what's going on.